take my bride, let's go for a ride in my new fangled automobile. This where we will go, nobody knows, but it's sure a great way to feel. Behind the wheel of the speed me to steal, it's my new fangled automobile. Hello and welcome to Vintage Car History. I'm Wild Bill. And as an American, I think it's fair to say that if you mention Belgium to most Americans, the first thing they think about won't be cars. Most likely, food will come to mind. Uh, Belgian waffles, Brussels sprouts, beer, and such. Yet, in the vintage car era, Belgium was a hot spot of automotive activity, and they built some incredible and beautiful cars. So today, we're going to take a brief look at 19th century Belgium from the driver's seat. Who first put Belgium on wheels? And how did they do it? Belgium of the late 19th century was quite the happening place. Industry was booming. Railroads were expanding. Large and grand public buildings were sprouting up all over, and cycling was all the rage. And being a nation that had an ancient, well-established road network, it was only natural that Belgians would begin to build cars. We'll start with Nicholas Vinke. He established a company in 1876 in the town of Mechelen that built locomotives. So when cars started to become a thing, he naturally jumped on the bandwagon, establishing a new company to make cars in 1894. Nicholas was good with money and a good engineer in his own right, but he wanted someone with experience with internal combustion engine cars to be his chief engineer and designer. He managed to recruit a Frenchman, Louis Delmer, who was at the time an engineer for Peugeot. Armed with the money and a good designer, Vinke completed his prototype model in 1894 and went into production in 1895. Like many new automakers of the time, Vinke did not make their own engines. They purchased them complete from other companies. Their first car used a two-cylinder Benz engine of three horsepower mounted in the rear, much like the contemporary Peugeot. Later cars would use Daimler engines as well as Benz, and their final cars would use Astors. Unfortunately, Vinke was not particularly profitable during the 10 years of production, which led the company to shutting down in 1905. Nicholas Vinke returned to his primary attention to locomotive manufacture and continued success in that industry. None of his cars are known to survive today. An early replica of the 1895 model does exist in the Automotive Museum of Berzinki in the Netherlands. Boy, I said that wrong. Now, any Belgians out there that are into Belgian car history might be saying, Wait a minute, are you sure Vinke was the first? Which brings up Gerard Das. This tinkerer extraordinaire found his own workshop in 1850, and by the 1880s was an electrician, mechanic, designer, engineer, whatever he needed to be in order to explore the world of new inventions. Of course, cars were on the list of new inventions. In 1893, he managed to get a good look at a Benz motor wagon, specifically an 1888 model, and with the help of his three sons, built his own version of a three-wheeled car the following year. Jerry designed his own engine for his trike, a single cylinder of two and a half horsepower. He built his first four-wheeled car in 1898. Das cars were very innovative and very fast, gaining quite the racing reputation in the vintage era. Now it is true that between the two makes, Das and Vinke, who came first is still debated. Like Daimler and Benz, they both made cars in the same year at about the same time and didn't have any knowledge of each other until long afterwards. A good argument can be made for either one as the first car builder in Belgium. Now let's move on to Metallurgique. This company had been around for decades as one of Belgium's largest manufacturers of locomotives and train cars. Pretty much anything that you could put on rails, they made the things. So they decided to give cars a go founding a division for that purpose and making their first prototypes in 1898. Full production began two years later. The company designed and built their cars from the ground up and brought in to their fold the best designers and engineers money could buy. The production cars used the shaft drive system a la Renault and a twin cylinder engine putting out four and a half horses. Metallurgique scored a big win when they hired on Ernst Lehmann as their chief designer fresh from Daimler. Metallurgique cars of the early 20th century were among the fastest and most sought after in Belgium. 
Many car makers of the vintage era started out as makers of guns, and Belgium also sported such a make. The Fabrique Nationale d'Armes de Guerre is likely well known to firearm enthusiasts as the company F.N. Herstal, founded in 1889 and is the largest gun manufacturer in Belgium. However, in 1899, the company began a division just called FN, specifically to see if they could make a car that would sell well. And it did. For nearly 30 years, the FN was the economy car of Belgium and sold very well. It was when they began trying moving up market that they began to struggle, and they ceased production of cars in the mid-30s, though still continued to make motorcycles and big trucks for many years after. And let's not forget the Wilford, which made a brief appearance during this period. Charles Wilford founded his car company in Tamise, Belgium in 1896. His first cars rolled out of his factory the following year and continued production for a few years. One thing that was definitely different about his cars, the engines were not steam or gas. They burned fuel oil. His engines were based on the Hornsby Aquid engine that was contemporary at the time. Once 1900 came along, the Belgian auto industry exploded with new makes and types of cars, from light cycle cars to grand luxury cars to sports cars and everything in and out between. There were a few other Belgian makes before 1900 that I didn't mention today, and of course some of the ones that I did uh, you'll hear more about as this channel goes on. So relax and reflect for a moment. The country that created Stellar Artois also made some of the greatest cars of the vintage era. Thanks for watching Vintage Car History, and we'll see you next week. Peace.